Hello, royal folks. It's good to see you all here again. This is your regular dose of royal news and analysis. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Thanks. So now, I mean, can you even imagine the utterly delusional levels of self-entitlement and blind narcissism it takes for Harry and Meghan to even think about extending a hollow olive branch under these circumstances? What? You two grifters expected some heartfelt gratitude for remembering to send literal well wishes as Kate's fighting for her life against the big C after assassinating her character for years. That's low even for opportunists of your breathtaking magnitudes. This story's got layers within layers of cringeworthy self-parody, almost like the Sussexes themselves are performance artists achieving meta-commentary on what truly insufferable sociopaths they've willfully become. The gall to try rebooting the long-demolished Fab Four narrative in the midst of the Cambridges facing their most intimate personal hells to date is just, wow, I'm speechless. I really thought these two irredeemable shit-stains couldn't possibly plumb new depths of deplorable behavior after Harry's Burn It All Down memoir and the cringy Netflix series already torched any remaining family equity to the ground. Yet here they come, slithering out of whatever fortunately childless den of anti-monarchy delusion they inhabit, smelling fresh blood in the water. The second poor Princess Catherine gets diagnosed with cancer, Princess Petty Party, and her equally lawn-jockeying consort decide it's the perfect time to love-bomb their way back into what remains of the Windsor good graces, as if tenderly wishing the woman you've spent years assassinating health and healing would somehow magically wash all that spiritual filth away from their grubby manicured palms. For anyone still foolishly convincing themselves that Meghan and Harry were ever much more than rapacious opportunists fueled by wounded egos and status mania, well, Here's yet another vividly nauseating reminder of their grotesque true colors on full display, taking the most unforgivable personal tragedy imaginable and crassly leveraging it all to try reinserting themselves into a palace they nuked long ago. I genuinely don't think the human mind is capable of comprehending the sheer black hole of emotional emptiness it takes to decide profiting off someone else's cancer battle is your best look. That's the kind of against the grain, aggressively sociopathic game they're playing at this point. And you know what? I genuinely have to give William and Kate sincere props for having the intestinal fortitude to simply stonewall these hollowed-out shell husks masquerading as in-laws without a moment's reproachful hesitation, making the conscious decision to not just turn the other freshly ironed cheek yet again to Harry and Meghan's latest stunt, but meeting their self-produced victimhood clouds with a dignified wall of stony silence for a change. That takes real inner resilience when your entire reality has been torn asunder like the Cambridges currently has. Imagine watching literal family members not only gleefully torch all your legacies to the ground over the past few years, but then hypocritically attempt to swoop in for the PR clear after you get privately diagnosed with an illness that could very well kill you in the end. That's the kind of uniquely twisted violation of boundaries that only two unrepentant malignant narcissists like Meghan and Harry would ever think nothing of inflicting on even their own flesh and blood for selfish gain. And in doing so, they've officially forfeited whatever microscopic olive branch privileges they've been foolishly clinging to all this time. See, at this point, the scales have now tipped irrevocably from the Cambridges appearing like uncharitable monsters for cutting off the Sussexes, to Harry and Meghan willfully nuking whatever remaining family grace still tethered them to the monarchy's last threads of decency and ethics. Their actions in the past few months alone against their own kinfolk have been so maliciously and traitorously indefensible, I'd argue William and Kate would have been entirely in the right banishing them to the outer realms of cultural irrelevancy altogether if they'd wanted to. The fact they remain stalwart to wishing these royal human stains health in the face of lancing flesh wounds speaks to their divine patience. I guess we finally found the mythical line of human indecency even royal narcissist vampires like Harry and Meghan fear crossing, sneering in the face of an actual family cancer crisis in a desperate bid to resuscitate their flailing relevancy. Though considering their proven track records for disingenuous dushbaggery, I wouldn't put it past them to still try crashing the royal woe is me, pity party before all is said and done.
Then you've got the fascinatingly depraved subtext of Megan's screaming banshee number one mouthpiece, Omid Scobie, bizarrely name-dropping Kate as an alleged royal racist mastermind behind the infamous concerns over Archie's skin tone. Once again, dragging the princess name through the mud mere moments after she gets placed on the cancer struggle bus. So not only are Harry and Meghan trying to co-opt Kate's health crisis for pathetic publicity stunts, but their thinly veiled public relations goon squad is now reviving their ugliest racist narrative missiles at will too. The disrespect is just appalling and says everything about their current state of perpetual aggrieved victimhood. At this point, any outside observers still willfully standing for the Duke and Duchess, despite this outrageous pattern of continually crapping over the humanity of their own family, really need to take a look in the proverbial moral mirror, because making repeated decisions to lash out at cancer-afflicted loved ones with racist code language and public shunning is about as rock-bottom as you can sink ethically. This conflict, at least for me, has now definitively moved past disgust over the Sussex's outrageously ungrateful betrayal of their own position into a more primal kind of revulsion toward their palpable lack of any shred of human empathy or perspective. Like how catastrophically broken and unwell do two people truly have to be to watch a pair of family members revealed as terminally ill and just keep doubling down. The time's long past too for any ambiguity in taking sides, by willfully electing to try capitalizing on the Cambridge's private trauma and savagely diminishing its gravity, Meghan and Harry have conclusively invalidated themselves as remotely redeemable public figures. Their actions are those of resentful, hollow sociopaths now, plain and simple. So keep on soaking up that negative limelight with your desperate publicity stunts, you two reprobates. Decry William and Kate as heartless monsters for understandably cutting off their toxic tormentors amidst unimaginable real-life adversity, when every single one of your psychologically scaring broadsides made the Cambridge's current positions a living hell to begin with. Honestly, just own your rightful disgraces already and leave the high road to better souls than you. If the House of Windsor had any shred of self-respect left, they follow the outstanding Invictus Games organizers' lead and completely sever remaining ties with these two incurably cancerous human pustules before they inevitably escalate to somehow profiting off of their family's unfortunate medical conditions even further. Because that, sadly, appears to be the next phase of malicious deaths the privileged princess and petty prince are destined to rapidly sink to in their permanently embittered rage spirals towards societal irrelevancy unspooling debased stunts to try and co-opt the sympathies of a world that has long stopped viewing them as anything more than vapid, talentless self parious So by all means, keep begging for scraps at the table you've already so recklessly scorched beyond recognition, Duke and Duchess of Delusion. Your public disgrace is officially complete. No more redeeming courtesies or second chances. The door has shut, the bridge burned to ashes, and all that's left is the pathetic, smoldering wreckage of your own karma. So what do you guys think about this news, guys? Sounds off in the comment, and let me know what you think. Stay tuned for more updates on the intriguing world of royalty. Until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Thank you.